Shirt matches. It's on video. So. Oh, yeah. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Nice weather, huh? Thank you. Hot, hot, hot. A little bit of rain. Nice. Dave mentioned earlier. It's true. We're all going to we don't care about that. <laughs> We're going to talk about cars uh, a little bit. Uh, this applies to men and women. Oh, yeah. Do you remember what your first car was? How many remember your first car? See, people don't remember what they had for breakfast yesterday, but they remember their first car. And women name them. Men don't, but women name the car. Bessie, Lulu, they have names. My first car was a 1959 Nash Metropolitan. Anybody remember those things? All right, looked like a little bar of soap. Nash. <laughs> It had one big flat seat in it. There were cars that you could have back in the day that fathers would not let you take their daughters out in for reasons you could figure out on your own. My car, no problem. Two little tiny seats in there, nobody was uh, whatever. Anyway, it was a convertible, which I also thought was cool. My dad and I paid I paid two hundred and fifty, my dad paid two hundred and fifty uh, for the car. It had a little teeny weeny spare tire on the back, which was stupid. Because if you had a blowout, all you had to do was pull it in and dump the donuts and take care of it. It was the goofiest little car in the world, three on the column. And I was a junior in high school. And my girlfriend, we were going to the prom, and she informed me there's no way I can get my dress in that stupid old car here. <laughs> so you got to figure something out. And I talked to my mom and dad. Dad was using his car, so mom said, Fuck your grandpa. Call that on and see if you're on your big Pontiac Bonneville, big bone there. 
Well, I called him up and he said, yeah, come on up here. So I went up to his house. Yeah, this is more than one. When you ask your grandfather for something, you must go through a 45-minute safety lecture first. I had to learn what the gears meant and where the emergency brake was. Like, I didn't know any of that. So now I've got this great big car that I'm going to take my girl to the prom in. Leaving my grandfather's house, I'm driving down Ninth Street, and I see my friend Jim Hens yeah. standing on the car, and he waved at me, and I let him in the car, and he's sitting in the other seat, and everything's cool. Then we saw David Wheeler, another friend of mine. Now, there ain't no room for him, but we want to get him yeah. in there anyway, so I let him sit on the back and be on the best spare time. And then we saw Jay Gilton, who was another friend of mine, on our way downtown, and he got on there, too. So they're both riding on the back. They could have, could have killed him. And I go flaming down Ninth Street in this goofy little car, and I pass my grandpa going the other way. I get home, and Mom doesn't even raise her voice. She says, Grandpa, I want you to call. Well, I didn't really want to call, Grandpa, but I did. You should have seen us getting that dress in that little tiny car. And that was my first car. And I've had many since then, and my wife is not as much of a car person as I am. I want to introduce you to a real car guy here. We're going to talk a little bit about cars. And we're also going to talk about his relationship with, with the Lord. Uh, his name is David Fry. He is the, what are you, the president, the general manager, the chief bottle washer, the whatever, at Willamette Electric, and uh, also attends church. Come on up here. Uh, and let's talk a little bit. We've been providing chairs and water. Good to see you, brother. Come on up and have a seat. Now, you, David, have a couple of cars. You're right over there next to me. Talk about the two cars you have over there right now. You've got more than me. Right? What do you got up here? Oh, over here. Firebird. Okay. But you have more Oops. in the stable, right? I touched it. So tell her, I mean, what, what gets someone in this city? So a lot of us guys, we started with, you know, model cars and that kind of thing when we were teenagers. And like, what got you involved in, in cars, collecting hot rocks and all that? Oh, my goodness, it was like, just growing up in a year, hot rocks were everywhere. Uh, you could buy them cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Going out to high school, going to the races every weekend, racing, being involved yeah. in racing. Um, just always liked the hot rods. Anything that was fast. Been there, done that too. So, when you, when you go to a car show, it gives you an opportunity to, I guess, meet a lot of people. I mean, you've met a lot of people today. I sat right next to you, and everybody was interested in talking about your car. It's kind of a cool thing. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 I want you to tell the story. You, I, I'm shooting a little because I've already heard this story, but it's a great one. You have to hear uh, the story of your engagement and why that red Mustang is sitting back there right now. Well, it's very my bride. Uh, almost 28 years. And I met my wife. On our first date. No big deal, and off we went. And it's been that way, you know, for 28 years. She loves cars. Uh, red Mustang. We go to Hot Oaks Nights every year. We've been doing it since since they started about 20 years ago. We don't have that. Hot Oaks Nights. We get really busy at work. Guys, when you have a plan, it's usually not the bar. <laughs> so we go to Reno. I haven't done any two stamps. We get to Reno, we go buy our car, or I mean a card, and then we go take her shopping, buy her nice beautiful seats. So it came to our anniversary, and I, and I shared this with her. She said, you know, let's go shop. <laughs> She had a blank look. She just looked at me. She says, Do you have a plan? I see that. I said, No, I planned it. I planned This is great. It's a great idea. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm all deflated. I don't, I don't know what to do. So later on, we're walking around, looking at cars and just have, you know, trying to have a good time. And she looked at me and she said, I want to buy it. 
light is on? I said, yeah. She points at that red Mustang out there. She says, buy me that. I said, but that's a lot bigger than a ring. <laughs> and she says, I know. Next year, you'll plan ahead.
we use the term accept Christ. I accepted Christ. There, I'm sure, are those that don't quite understand what is that. What does that mean? In your mind, what does it mean to accept Christ? Accepting Christ is just, you know, realizing who we are and where we're at in our life and knowing that we're going to have a hope for the future and who we are. And asking Christ to um, come into our life and knowing that we need something different. <coughs> Hello, Pinto Reynolds.
my nuts really is. That's it. 